I knew there were hacks out there to make thirds easier and cleaner to play, but I can't believe that after all these years, it didn't really occur to me that I can practice them in such a way that would allow me to play a two octave scale in thirds with almost no shifting. It's not that I didn't know that there were alternative fingerings. Actually, I kind of came up with some myself over time, but I always thought that I was cheating by doing that. But I got some reassurance this week that it's actually helpful to practice it like that sometimes. So better late than never, right? Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.live helping you along your musical journey. In this video, I'm going to share with you some alternative fingerings for playing thirds that would involve less shifting. It might not apply to all the different keys, and maybe you're wondering why, why should one even bother to consider alternative fingerings from what's considered the standard. And the reason is that sometimes in repertoire we will find ourselves in a situation where one of these alternative fingering options actually makes it easier to play. So by default in my scale practice, like many others, I normally include in the routine the standard fingering for thirds, that is one and three alternating with two and four, and sometimes two with the open string, depending on the key. So if I were to play the C major scale like this, the standard way, um, I would essentially have to shift every other pair of notes. And so on. So you see, there's a lot of shifting. And depending on the speed, this can actually put a really big limit to the clarity, um, especially in the lower positions because the distance of the shift is larger and also on the lower strings that takes a little bit longer to respond. So last week as I was browsing and geeking out in the platform Tonebase, uh, by the way, I strongly recommend that you check it out if you haven't done so already, if you are serious about the violin or viola. I was watching an interview with the violinist Adam Hangorski, and he demonstrates how to play the same C major scale in two octaves that involves open strings, harmonics, and some really unusual fingering combinations. And let me tell you, my mind was blown. Like, why didn't I do this before? What I did is, as I was watching, I slowed down the video. It's so great, we can slow down videos now. And the camera thankfully zoomed in on his hand so I could see what he was doing. So I wrote down his fingering and I gave it a try. I couldn't believe how much more comfortable my hand felt and the whole scale just seemed so much easier, especially switching from one pair of notes to another. Now I have also encountered an exercise for thirds in one of Dunas's works. In his Opus 27 he has a section how to play thirds with little to no shifting. Uh, with the same kind of goal, so that there's less shifting involved. But I noticed that in Dunas's exercise, it was actually kind of uncomfortable to play, and there were some thirds that I physically couldn't do um, because my hands couldn't reach them, especially in the lower position. So if you are like me and you really hate um, in the first position, reaching down to that F natural, so for example, you have D and F natural, if you really hate reaching for that third, it's really uncomfortable, you'll probably really, really like Adam Hungorski's fingerings for the C major scale, which I will demonstrate here for you. And if you have time, go check out the whole two-hour interview with him on tone base. It really opened up my mind to a lot of things about violin playing, not just scales. Now, this pattern for the C major scale in thirds, it will take some time to get used to because we are not simply alternating between two different patterns where we can simply predict what to do for the next thing. So starting with the normal three and one for C and E, instead of going to four and two, which many of us don't like because it's uncomfortable, uh, what he did is on the bottom finger, he actually uh, slided up the first finger to F because it's a half step. So slide up with a one, 
So it's four and one for um, F and D. So I'm gonna play the scale from beginning to end and I will put the music down below so you can follow along with the fingering for this pattern. Now this is just one of many options. You can come up with a different, slightly different variation of this, but I found this to be very interesting. <laughs> slightly different coming down at the end than going up so that can actually match it doesn't have to be exactly this way so you might have noticed that a lot of those shifts they were very very small and sometimes they were actually extensions now we can't use open strings in all the keys but one thing that you can observe is how this kind of fingering it really takes advantage of half steps and some of the extensions, the easier ones, like reaching back for second and first finger or third finger and fourth finger and all the way up in the highest position, even though something might technically be a shift, homing in on the finger sliding up only by a half step, it allows it to not really feel like a shift at all, just a small hand adjustment. So another example, a simpler example, let's say in third position, where we have uh, B and D. So if we pay attention to where the half step is gonna be from B to C, if we do the same one, three, two, one, three, because there's a half step with the third finger, and well, the first finger is going a whole step, it might technically be going from third to fourth position, but it doesn't really feel like we're doing a shift because it just feels like that we're paying attention to the B going up by a half step. So it really feels more like a small hand adjustment. And because of that, it feels like it's more seamless to go from one pair of notes to the next when we pay attention to the half steps like this. So of course, when I tried playing the scale this way for the first time and was really surprised by how much easier it felt, the first thing that came to my mind is like, okay, this is C major scale and you know, you can use your open strings and harmonics, but what will happen if we try it on a more difficult scale where we can't really use open strings like that to our advantage? What can we do to use the same sort of idea? So I tried this on uh, another scale. I picked A flat major and I thought, okay, it has four flats. And since we can't use the open strings here, how can we minimize how much shifting we do? So of course there is more than one approach to this and one option, so if we're using A flat major, for example, we can start up high on G and D string, also with fingers one and three, like we did in C major. So starting on uh, up high on One option you can do here, for this scale and I'm going to try to do two octaves with as little shifting as possible uh, using the same kind of idea of paying attention to where the half steps are and where we can take advantage of them. Three, four here. Then I'm going to go down to two and one, like an extension downward, because two is already there. Then we have a half step from G to A flat. Then three and four again. Because three and four is easy in a high position. Then again, reach down to two and one. Then one, three. Half step from the third finger. Two, four. Then half step on the second finger. Cool. Then we can do three, four on top twice. Then from one and two, come back the same way, three and four. Then 
Then we have first finger half step. Then three, four. Two, four. One, three. So that's one option for A flat major. You can apply similar ideas to other scales. This is not the only way to do it, but uh, you, if you try it, you might notice that it takes a lot less effort and you don't have to travel as far. It takes up less space. So you can potentially go quicker if you do this kind of fingering. Of course, the tricky thing is that it doesn't follow the predictable pattern of just alternating between the same two things, one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four. Another reason why you might want to practice alternative fingerings for thirds, besides to make something more clear or to be able to play it faster in repertoire, is because taking a different angle at something, it will raise a little bit more awareness of where those half steps are, because in six and thirds, very often we have to Kind of really pay close attention to where it's a half step and where it's a whole step so for example in c major going from the first pair to the second we have an e that will be going a half step higher to f on the top and then the third finger note, the note c will be going up a whole step to d so we have to be aware of that so when we practiced the other finger and did a little slide with the first finger from e to f and the fourth finger kept that whole step it was just another angle of getting that same interval and just being a little more aware of the distance between the half steps and whole steps. And then one more thing that's more true in thirds than in sixths is that because we have to be on two different strings and the, the notes are essentially further apart on the fingerboard, which means that the whole step higher up, we have to remember the whole step higher up is not going to be as large as the whole step on the bottom here. It'll give you a better approach on getting to know your fingerboard a little bit better. So sometimes doing one of these alternative fingerings and then going back to the standard, um, it can make it a little bit easier to play because you have a better sense of how the half steps and whole steps change in different parts of the fingerboard. So that's it for this video, folks. I hope you got something out of it. Um, this is not sponsored, but go check out Tonebase. It's such a great platform. I'm learning so much from it every single day. Let me know your biggest takeaway down in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video. Happy practicing.